Hi hey everyone. What I wanted to talk to you today is about contextual research. There will be three sort of research elements to any good project, I think, for GCSE or A-level. The first is your designer research, looking at the work of other artists, designers, sculptors, theorists, whatever it might be, to inspire kind of form, shape, um, and those elements of your design. The next that you will look at later in the project and probably when you've got more accessibility is primary research. You know, you gathering photographs and doing drawings from things that you've gone out, found and seen, whether that might be nature, urban environments, materials, material combinations, those sorts of things. But a really key um, element is this contextual research. And contextual research is the topic of your project. All of you have been given briefs that have got two elements to them. The first might be architecture, let's say, and the second might be sustainability. Or you might be looking at culture and jewellery. Or you might be looking at upcycling in furniture design. All of your briefs have got these two tangents. And, you know, this is the kind of second part of your brief. For mine, my hypothetical um, research that I've done here as an example, I've chosen air pollution. Equally, your project, and several of you are looking at kind of sustainability, this might be a smaller topic within that. And you are very welcome to narrow your brief down to say, actually, look at kind of sustainability as a whole or environment as a whole is too broad. And I'm going to really focus in on air pollution or kind of tree populations or green space or mental health within your field of study. So by all means, narrow it down. Mine is fairly narrow, looking specifically at air pollution in urban environments, but yours might choose to be broader and longer um, and find within that areas that really interest you, or you might choose from the outset to choose something a little bit more niche. That said, air pollution in urban environments is a topic there is so much information out on the internet about and hopefully all of your briefs have been designed in a way that information about them is accessible. But you do need to go and look for it, okay? Going online, going on Google, picking up newspapers, looking in books if you've got them, you know, are really useful. Do be, as you're going through, taking screenshots of newspaper articles. Findings interesting and you know significant statistics which back up your kind of theory and premise for your project. Taking pull quotes, copying bits of text which are really significant from articles you found online and you know highlighting them in your writing is really key. I really like pull quotes, especially in a topic where it might become quite wordy, where you might be screenshotting areas of text where you might be writing quite lengthy paragraphs, you know, having some statements in bold which you can navigate through or a moderator might flick through and pick up on is really important. But it's also useful for you. Those of you who are doing your Unit 1, um, those of you doing your Unit 1 A-level at the moment um, will be having to write an essay to a company. And most of that will be on the context of your project. What is your project about? Why does it need to exist? What is it aiming to do? So, in, by spending some time and doing this well, you will be able to purely just lift paragraphs and pull quotes out of your research and put them into your essay. So, you are doing kind of two pieces of work in one. Those of you doing the GCSE, I'll also share this video with. You won't be writing an essay, but equally, it's really important to spend time, you know, making this really thorough. And by doing the research, you will find ideas. I found it really interesting to see these articles about during the lockdown, the increase in kind of animal behaviour and animals engaging further in urban environments, which typically they're more wary of. Um, I found it really interesting, you know, facts like there's been 11,000 or predicted 11,000 fewer deaths from pollution in the UK during the lockdown um, as, as a result of reduced emissions and things in the environment from factories and cars. So on my first page I've got here, I've really looked at the overarching bits of evidence, newspaper articles, statistics, um, 
and and written a, about some some of the findings and things within you know reductions between thirty and forty percent in concentration of particulates and things from from automotive in the UK. You know, really interesting thing which I might then use to inspire and inform my design in the future. On my second page, if I can get down to it, on my second page, I've looked a little bit more about air pollution within design. So the first page, you know, you might do several pages, you might do one page, I suggest you probably want to do at least one page, preferably two or more. And again, a lot of that can be images, a lot of it can be lifted text, which you, you know, highlight to show that you've read it and understand it. Please make sure you kind of reference where you've got things from. Again, this will be really useful for your bibliographies at the end of your project. But in my second page, I've really looked at kind of how these factors um, and air pollution is informing designs. It's from this smog eating pavilion um, from the expo in 2015 to this gigantic air purifier, which is 200 feet tall in, in China which they've created to pull particulates out, to these posters that have been designed by Simon, by Simon Armitage, which actually use materials um, to take emissions out of the air. And I believe that each poster, each billboard poster, takes all of the emissions from 20 cars per day out of the environment. So it's a plan for how you, know, you might be adding things into an urban environment, whether it's a, you know, a poster or a building that actually cleans the air. I've done some research and found out some things about these materials, titan titanium dioxide um, and photocatalysts, as I can't even pronounce it, things I knew nothing about before starting this research. And you know, I was only doing this to give you a sort of visual example, but I found out lots of interesting things, and that's what you should be doing. I'm now by finding out and hearing about this material, it might mean in my design process going forward, I'm going to incorporate some of those things. I might be thinking about incorporating towers or doing more research into how these work or how they behave. And could I incorporate all of these towers which pull air pollution out of the air so the air around buildings is, becomes much cleaner for, for my design? Your contextual research is there to inform your design. So it's really worthwhile reflecting on it, saying what are the key things? Could my building not include parking spaces, but bike bays instead, to encourage, like they have in Amsterdam, to encourage more people to cycle? You know, might it include a bus stop in it so that it's an encouragement to use public transport rather than individual automotive transport? Could it include particular materials within? Might it even include posters and adverts and, and things like that? You know, these are all factors I would have never considered in my design. And that's what your contextual research wants to do for your project. Bring in new factors, new statistics, and a new justification for your design. So do spend a good amount of time researching, finding out, writing, um, highlighting bits of text, including it. This can be one page, two pages, 10 pages of your project. However, if you feel that you haven't got to anything yet that's going to change the direction, inform your project, make it more enriched um, and more justified, then keep going with the research until you find those factors. Always be thinking about what you're looking at, how could this inform design? So if I was to do a third page now, I'd be kind of thinking about bullet pointing some of the key findings within my research and thinking how could I apply them to design as I listed just a minute ago. So best of luck with this task. Again, think about presentation, try and make it consistent with what you've done before um, and best of luck. I look forward to seeing what you come up with.